today we're going to talk about fracture the clinical and uh, investigations for diagnosis and its management in general so diagnosis of a fracture clinically the patient may present with any of the following symptoms so the most common symptom is pain pain at a site so especially in certain fractures like the stress fracture where the x ray may not reveal anything pain may be the symptom that is present in most fractures there will always be pain associated with the site swelling so swelling may be initially it may be mild that is in the first few uh, minutes to an hour of the uh, trauma the swelling may be mild but later it will increase and become severe so when the patient presents to the emergency department immediately after the fracture significant swelling may not be seen but if they present uh, maybe 6 to 8 hours later there will be significant swelling at the site so pain and swelling together is one of the most important presenting symptom of a fracture then second third symptom is a deformity so you can see an obvious deformity or an altered positioning at the fractured site loss of function the patient will be unable to use the fractured limb now when on examination there will be tenderness on applying pressure at the suspected fracture site or on or indirect pressure may also suggest a fracture so instead of pressing at the at the site suspected site at a site nearby when you press also the pain may be felt at the fracture site so that is tenderness then on applying pressure you may be able to feel or even hear a bony crepitus that's a crackling paper crackling like sound then on palpating the bony surface through the soft tissues elevations and depression may be seen at the fracture site then normally it is understood that it is the joint which uh, which is mobile but you may elicit mobility at the fractured site or the there may be an abnormal range of movement at the joint so earlier we were able to move the full joint now we are able to move only a restricted range of movement that also may suggest a fracture these are the common features seen in clinically in a fracture pain swelling deformity loss of function tenderness bony crepitus irregularity on the bony surface and abnormal mobility at the fractured site now regarding the investigations since uh, we uh, will we will uh, look at this from the angle of a emergency trauma case so when a regular trauma comes blood grouping and rh typing cross matching samples to arrange blood for transfusion immediate h hemoglobin and uh, pax cell volume estimation then imaging investigations like chest x ray ultrasound abdomen thorax ct abdomen and thorax these are all for looking at sites of bleeding a doppler ultrasound or angiogram when suspecting a vascular injury now for the fracture as per se since it is not exactly part of the primary survey you can take x rays to rule out bone fractures antero posterior view lateral view and certain cases special view may be done once the patient is stabilized now in the case of those presenting uh, through with uh, with features of pathological fracture then to rule the rule out the underlying cause serum calcium serum vitamin d serum phosphate serum alkaline phosphate dexa scan serum protein electrophoresis chest x ray mandu test so these will rule out vitamin d deficiency osteoporosis multiple myeloma uh, osteomyelitis due to tuberculosis due to an underlying maybe pulmonary tuberculosis metastasis rule out for primary in the lung all of this can be ruled out by these baseline investigations similarly for further evaluation of a fractured uh, vertebra a ct or mri of the spine also may be required to assess so these are some of the investigations that can be done in general for a fracture now regarding the management of fractures so we must consider this in three phases phase 1 which refers to the emergency care 
phase 2 which is about the definitive care and phase 3 which is rehabilitation so emergency care can be into two types one at the spot of the accident so there immediately it is important to provide rest to the part which is suspected to have a fracture by splinting so common splits i will show you the picture so common splits can be any of these as you can see a folded newspaper also is uh, strong enough to uh, splint a fracture you can use a scale or a 30 centimeter scale wooden scale a pillow can be used a wooden plank can be used a bamboo if locally available an umbrella all of this can be used as locally available splints then ice applying local application with an ice pack helps to reduce the swelling then a bandage at the site again compression will help to reduce the swelling and to elevate the limb at the earliest to reduce the swelling so these are the points to be noted when managing the fracture at the accident site now in the emergency department the prior uh, the importance primary importance is to stabilize the patient with the initial resuscitation then evaluate the patient for the cause and the severity of the injuries after you stabilize the general condition then you can evaluate and treat the fractured limb so general assessment includes airway breathing circulation and then to maintain the airway breathing and circulation provide oxygen inhalation if required if there is hypotension you can correct it by giving rapid intravenous administration of crystalloids like normal saline or ringer's lactate through a wide bore cannula then you can send the necessary blood investigations as mentioned earlier you can arrange the blood or blood component for transfusion keep monitoring the blood pressure pulse heart rate and respiration now while you maintain and assess all the vitals you can evaluate for head injury chest injury and abdominal injury now if the person is unconscious or there is a suspected head injury you can go ahead with an endotracheal intubation and connect the patient to a ventilator and provide critical care now if there is a wound which is having a significant bleeding then we can stop the blood loss by applying pressure or packing the wound or uh, uh, repositioning and providing rest to the limb and thereby controlling the bleed if there is an active external bleed you can explore the wound and ligate the bleeding vessel or suture the wound and apply pressure bandaging now if there is an internal bleed is suspected as in a hemothorax or a hemoperitoneum then you can consider doing an intercostal tube for the hemothorax then you may have to plan for a damage control surgery or a laparotomy if there is uncontrolled uh, internal abdominal bleed as in a splenic bleed or liver injury or a vascular injury intra-abdominal now once uh, the patient is stabilized the fractured limb can be examined so as to rule out any nerve or vessel injury and the splint which was earlier applied from the accident site should be reapplied properly with a proper splint analgesics must be given for pain control and a prophylactic antibiotic for control of infection anti tetanus prophylaxis must be given especially if there is a open wound so once you stabilize the general condition patient can be sent for radiological and imaging investigations for further evaluation now these are come out the standard splints thomas splint the cramer wire splint inflatable splint the head halter sling so these can be applied from the emergency department depending on the site of the fracture now phase 2 we will be talking specifically about the fracture that's the definitive care so there are three fundamental principles of fracture treatment reduction immobilization and preservation of function so reduction is the technique of setting a displaced fracture to proper alignment immobilization it is needed to maintain the bones in the reduced position and then preservation of function that basically refers to physiotherapy now one word about reduction not every fracture needs to be reduced some can be just immobilized directly without any actual reduction for example a rib fracture a rib fracture needs adequate rest and there is no need to reduce the fracture as such now about reduction not all fractures need reduction as i mentioned earlier reduction can be by any of the following methods you can do close manipulation 
or a continuous traction and open reduction. So I'll say a few words about it. So for close manipulation, it is the initial method which is done in most common fractures. The displaced bone is then is felt through the soft tissues and then realigned. Now this also means that the moment you do a close manipulation, you need some form of immobilization. So usually uh, we can do a plaster or cast immobilization with a slab or a cast so that we can keep the reduced uh, bones fragments in the same position. Now here one more point to be noted here is that once you do a close manipulation, an x-ray is taken to see if it is an acceptable reduction. If it is acceptable, you can proceed with the immobilization. And the second method is continuous traction. So this is done when you want to counter the forces that would prevent reduction or would cause redisplacement after you reduce. So in such a case, you may have to put the patient on a bed and provide continuous traction. So that is the main problem here. We will have to send the, keep the patient in a bed for long periods. And the final and third method is open reduction. So here you surgically open the fracture site you reduce the fractured bones under vision. So here a form of internal fixation may be required as immobilization. So we'll come to the immobilization section. So what is immobilization? It is basically done to prevent displacement or angulation, to relieve pain and to prevent movement that might interfere with the union. So that is the importance of immobilization. So in some cases we can directly proceed with immobilization so the methods include non-operative methods like strapping. In the case of a phalanx, phalanx fracture, you can strap the fractured finger to the adjacent finger which is normal. A sling, cast mobilization, functional bracing, splints and traction. Now operative methods include internal fixation and then using an external fixator. So I will show you. So this is a strapping. You can see that one of the fractured fingers strapped to the adjacent normal finger. Now this is a common arm sling and this is a collar cuff sling. Here is a cast. You can see that the joint is also involved in the plaster of Paris cast. And here is a functional brace. So here the main thing is that the joints are spared. So a person is able to walk with the brace. Now this here you can see. These are the traction and the splints, splints with traction. So you can see the continuous traction being applied here. This is another form of splint with traction. You can see that the weights are here providing the traction. Now regarding the open methods of immobilization, so you can see internal fixation is where you put a plate and screws and it is within the soft tissue directly on the bone. Or you can use a intramedullary nail and fix it with screws. Now, external means that the the fixators will be seen externally outside the skin while they fix and immobilize the bone. So this is an external fixator. You can see two types over here: ring and pin type. So this is an X-ray showing the. You can see the intramedullary nail and the bone is fixed. So nothing will be seen outside, only on an x-ray you can see. This is another example of a screw and plate. And this is how a normal leg would look if an external fixator was used. So this is a pin fixator and this is a ring fixator. So this here in particular is the Ilizaro technique. Now the phase 3 or rehab rehabilitation. So it is one of the most important phase in fracture management. Rehabilitation of a fractured lip begins at the time of injury and continues till regain of a near normal function. So we have methods like joint immobilization. That is you can use passive mobilization, active assisted mobilization and active mobilization. And you can also use a motorized device for the mobilization. So the second example is muscle re-education exercises. Now this can be static contractions during the immobilized period when you can't move and it can be dynamic contraction exercises after you complete or you remove the immobilization. So this is basically to strengthen and to 
uh, improve the function of the muscle which has now been in no use, has not been used during the period of the fracture. So it needs to be re-educated about its functions. Now, can you functional use of a limb where the limb is put to use in a guarded way once the fracture is reaching near union. So here it comes the use of crutches and a walker for a lower limb fracture. So this here is passive joint mobilization. You can see that somebody else is moving the joint. This is a motorized device which helps in the joint mobilization. And this is a walker and this is a crutch. Now in general, the summary for management. So if you have a fracture and once you rule out neurovascular injury, you can proceed with the fracture management. If it is undisplaced, you can directly go ahead with the immobilization and later on plan physiotherapy. For the displaced fracture, you must attempt reduction. So you can do close reduction either by the close manipulation technique or traction. And if the x-ray shows an acceptable position, you can proceed with immobilization. Now, if it is unacceptable, then you have to plan open reduction with internal fixation usually. Now, if it's obviously displaced fracture, then directly proceed with open reduction and internal fixation. All of this requires rehabilitation or physiotherapy towards the end to regain the normal function. So, this is the management of fractures in general. Now, most of these may cater to a long bone fracture. Now, before ending, we will have a few words regarding complications of fractures. So, the immediate complication is obvious, the same as that of the trauma. So, you can have a hypovolemic shock, injury to vessels, injury to muscle, injury to tendon, injury to joints and injury to organs. The early complications again include the same shock, acute respiratory distress syndrome, fat embolism syndrome, deep vein thrombosis pulmonary embolism, aseptic traumatic fever, septic septicemia, crush syndrome. And local causes which may develop in the early period, infection, compartment syndrome. Now the late complications are directly related to the healing of the bone fracture. So delayed union, non-union, malunion, cross union. Others include avascular necrosis, shortening of the bone, joint stiffness, sudex dystrophy, osteomyelitis, ischemic contracture, myositis ossificans, osteoarthritis. So these are the early, sorry, immediate, early and late complications that can happen following a fracture. Now here in this particular class, the reference has been taken from the textbook of Essential Orthopedics, 6th edition by Maheshwari doctor. The pictures are also obtained locally from the Google search. Thank you.